Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. June 2nd, Brecher Trading Market Outlook for next week. This is the free edition. I, I usually do one every two weeks, but the last one was so popular and hit the nail on the head so well that I did on May 25th that I decided to do another one. How low can we go in the SPX and all of these? So we're going to make this short and sweet, but I'm going to give you the expectations of where we could go on the markets in here. I took off every moving average except the 200-day. Why did I do that? And you're going to see on the right, the 200-day isn't cut and dry. Anybody that tells you, oh, if it breaks, you're going to die. Do you see? That's just not the case. You get a lot of fake outs. I use it to show relative where everything can go. So let's just go into it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The first thing is going to be the Dow Jones Transportation Average. Boom. Go and check this out. I'm going to make this nice and big for you. As you see, the transports are tremendous amount under their 200 day. In fact, they're, you're not going to believe the 700 points under their 200 day. The other thing you're going to notice is go to drawings and I use another thing for reference from the rally all the way up. Where is the 50% retracement? Well, it was 9,912. We've overshot it. Why am I showing that? Because I want to show you what's going on on the right. On the right is the NASDAQ. It's a, now you can put in the futures or you can put in the cash. That's the futures. I just have a lot of support and resistance things. Sort of gets a little funky in here. But the, the what I wanted you to see was it's right at the 200. That's pretty dangerous. The other thing I want you to notice in here is the drawing tools. If you go to a 50% retracement, boy, that puts you at 68.86. Well, if you go and put this on the ESs, this is the E minis. You see that we're just under the 200 day and the 50% retracement gets you to 26.50. So the point in here is where is the objectives with the broad market? And I think you see where I'm going with this. This is what I want to show you. And I think it's the most important thing. Go and take the ESs on the left now. And on the right, I want to put the NASDAQ futures, the NQ. What you're going to notice in here is the inverse head and shoulders. That's what I'm going to be watching now. So if I draw this, what am I talking about with inverse head and shoulders? When we were talking about the markets rallying in December, so we had a big buy and balance we called the bottom in there. Then we stopped at this resistance zone. Remember all those bottoms that led after the break of it to a plunge in December. Then that became resistance. We formed an inverse head and shoulders, and then we've gone up by the amount of that move. I know that's hard to believe, but check this out. 2350, 2650, 300 points. 300 points from 2650, the measuring objective, 2950. Boy, I stink. I'm off by $11. It's pretty good. If you look at the inverse head and shoulders on the NASDAQ on the right, same thing. Inverse head and shoulders, you're going to see that measured all the way to 7,800. That's 1,000 points. And it went up 1,000 points. The point is, where are we in relation to all the indexes and where's our objectives? And that's what I want to show you right now. The first thing you're going to notice, 50% retracement gets you to 2650. 50% uh, and it gets you to the breakout of the inverse head and shoulders. The inverse head and shoulders here, 6800. Guess what the 58% retra uh, 50 retracement 50% retracement is? 6800. That's just incredible that they're both the same. Now, why is this so important? And there's a third thing. Go and look at the date of this breakout. It was January 28th. January 28th. Where is the Dow Jones transports now? They're where they were January 28th. All the way down here. So the point is, if everything goes down to the same areas, you're going to get the SPX at 2650. You're going to get the NASDAQ at 6800. Keep in mind that I'm also watching the Russell. Very economically sensitive. Where was that inverse head and shoulders? right here at 1450, which was also January 28th. So that's where I think everything's going. How are you gonna play this though? And I wanna show you a number of things. So number one, I'm very much into the MACD. 
This is the 31016 MACD. I was showing this last week that when the red line hooks down, while the longer term blue line is pointing down, you usually get a sell off. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to know, are we already oversold? See the hook down, that worked absolutely perfect. Well, the point is in a bad, bad, bad market, like you had in December, you can get it this oversold. Now, usually the way I look at it is the weekly ES and NQ. You see this hook down on the right, that was a layup also. Go to a weekly and you'll see what I'm talking about of both. Usually when you get way oversold, that's usually the bottom. As you see, it's worked. It obviously can, hook, can go more than you'd ever think it could go. There's no doubt about it. But both of them are starting to get pretty oversold. Usually on a big sell-off, what you get is you get the first sell-off. You then get right there. Then you get the rally to resistance that gets this less oversold. You saw it here and you saw it here. And then you get the next hook down. So this is what I think could happen with the ES. Number one, we closed on our low. So there's no doubt you could have follow through on Monday. Plus with this Mexico tariff thing, it's, it's not resolved. You could definitely have that blip to 2650 on Monday. On the other hand, if we get something in here, like a 2725, and then we get a blip to test the resistance. Then I think you could go to the 2650. So the key is, if you notice in December, almost every, see those candles? Almost every single one you open up the next day and then sold off. Today we had a nice gap down. If we open up fractionally on Monday and there's no real tariff news, I think we're going to go down again. So I think the first level is going to be 2729. Right there. If that doesn't hold, then I think you're going to see the air hold at 2650. Go and look on the right at the NASDAQ. That's the index that includes Apple, Amazon, and so on. You see the support. You can't miss that support right around 7,000 to 7,100, right in this zone. That doesn't hold, though. I think it's destined to go to 6,800. What would upset the Apple card in this? No pun intended with the NASDAQ. Number one is if the transports miraculously have a massive rally. As you see, I took off all the indicators just so you could see the 200 and see the price action more clear. You can see there isn't a lot of support till 9,600 on the Dow Jones transports, but they are oversold as you see, no, no positive divergence. As you see, that's positive divergence where you make a new low fractionally, but the MACD is higher. We don't have any positive divergence. If for some odd reason this goes to 10,200 out of nowhere, of course I'm going to have to reestablish my parameters. But at the moment, when this closes almost on its absolute low, unless there's some positive tariff for China news uh, or uh, Mexico tariff news, this is probably destined for 9,600, and that's going to pull down the other indexes. One last thing to watch, the Nikkei over the weekend. As you see, the Nikkei looks like it broke. I head and shoulders top. If this measures, that measures about 1,500 points. That, uh, that would get you down, wow, all the way to the lows from December. Just keep that in mind. Last thing, before I forget, if I'm right, this is a head and shoulders top. That measures about 161 points. Guess what? That's also 2650. Isn't that amazing? On the right, the NASDAQ. Head and shoulders top, projects to 6,800 to 6,600. Just amazing how that works. So that's what I'm going to be watching the levels next week. I hope that helps. I hope you enjoy the video. Have a great rest of the weekend. Take care.